Come, Nerevar, come and rejoice, for today's sermon is a special one. No, not like the spooky specials we've just had. This one is special because it is about you, Nerevar. Of course, I'm perfectly conscious of your incarnated condition and your lack, your former memories, which is why I, Dagoth Ur, your sworn brother, shall remind you of it. So relax, have some leftover yam candies, and listen to your tale, Nerevar. Lord Inderil Nerevar, Saint Nerevar, Moon and Star, the Champion of Azura, the Hero of Red Mountain, and God Killer were some of your names. You were the Chimer King of Restain, how we used to call our dear Morrowind. As the Hortator, or Great Ashkan, of the United Chimer people, you forged an alliance with the Dwemer and were one of the founders of the First Council, uniting all the people of Resdain for the first time in the First Era. You then took on the title of First Counselor. Ah, the good times. It's a shame that the Alliance eventually broke down, leading to the War of the First Council. At the climactic Battle of Red Mountain, you led us to victory, though you died shortly after the battle betrayed by the Three Stooges, who later claimed control by stealing the powers of the heart from me. Under the Tribunal Temple, you were known as the Herald of the Triune Way. Ashlander prophecies of your rebirth as the Nereverine and your heroic return to Morrowind fueled the creation of the Nereverine cult. Then the leeches invented some disgusting fandom called Saint Nerevar, the captain, patron of warriors and statesmen who became so popular, it is now one of the foremost saints of the Dunmeri faith, along with his supposed wife being Almalexia the Warden, Lord Sothasil the Magus, Lord Vivek the Poet, and Saint Veloth the Pilgrim, and became patron saint of House Redoran. If I could turn their hypocrisy into energy, I'd be able to start up Akulakan and keep it running forever. Now the Nereverine prophecy foretold that you, Indoral Nerevar, would return as the Nereverine for the salvation of the descendants of the Chimer, the Dunmer. It was especially associated with the Nerevarin cult of the Ashlanders, which believed that the Nerevarin would cast down the tribunal as false gods and expel the foreigners, or at least the Empire, from Morrowind. How I wish this was true, you have no idea. Yet, over the millennia after your death, a number of Dunmer unsuccessfully attempted to satisfy the prophecy, becoming what we know as failed incarnates in the process, a very convenient phenomenon taken by the Tribunal Temple to disprove the prophecy, but by the Nerevarin cult to reinforce it. Because they obviously also dare to claim the right to legitimize you. The prophecy is generally believed to have been fulfilled, however, as in the Third Era by the current you, united the remaining Dunmer Great Houses and Ashlander tribes of Vardenfeld, defeated me, Dagoth Ur, the Sharmat, and definitively ended the rule of the Tribunal by killing the Tribunal false goddess Almalexia, who went completely nuts and removing the heart of Lorcan, the source of their divine powers, from the world. This does not honor the Sixth House and the tribe unmourned, my dear Nerevar. But worry not, I am a forgiving god, and as my sworn brother you shall be exempt from my fury. And the heart wasn't destroyed anyway. Nothing a good dive into the lava pool can't fix, and I can probably buy copious amounts of Dwemer parts to rebuild Akulakan from Skyrim's markets any day. Let us speak about your other incarnations, the failed incarnates. Of course, you won't remember them as they are their own beings, and each developed in different conditions, leading to unique individuals, much like you right now. And you can even meet them in the Cavern of the Incarnate here in Vanderfell. Our first case is Aduri. To fulfill the prophecy, Aduri followed a path of blood and war. Her love of senseless war proved to be her undoing. The path she followed led nowhere, and she was cast down as the hope of her people. But she helped the Vestige deny Kanun Chodala's claim to the title of Nerevarin in the Second Era. Ani Teria was a holy crusader of the Temple in the Tribunal's Golden Era. She contributed substantially to the writings that were suppressed by the Temple and considered apographa. She followed the Tribunal unquestioningly and didn't believe in the Nerevarin prophecies until it was too late. What a shame. She was the one who offered her mace to you, Nerevar. Kanun Chodala was an Ashlander Dunmer who was an Ashkan of the Urshilaku tribe in the mid-second era. He dared to falsely claim to be the Nerevarin. Blatant identity theft, and as the worthless thief he was, he died. Incarnate Danat refused to accept wise counsel, which led to the doom of his tribe. You must listen as well as proclaim. For wisdom ignored is ignorance. Heed my words, Nerevar. 
He helped the Vestige deny Kanun Chodala's claim to the title of Nerevarin. Elvil Vidron is a special cookie, since he was for some reason receiving waking dreams from me. However, unlike other dreamers who fell to my control, he instead believed these dreams to be prophetic and that he was you. He began walking around Saran, proclaiming himself Nereverin, attracting the attention of the Tribunal Temple. And you can guess how that went. I can't really blame him since that one was partially my fault, but... Well, he should have known better than go around saying that, knowing well how the three clowns react to it. Erodan saw Morrowind fall to the Empire. He lived through Morrowind's surrender and swore vengeance upon the Imperials and the Tribunal for their betrayal. I like this guy. Although in his later years he left for Red Mountain where he grew old and died fighting monsters and the Blight so he wasn't really that impactful anyway, but he did offer you his spear and armor, so that's something I guess. Hort Led died 400 years prior to your appearance. He was a thinker, not a doer, and though he was chosen, he was not a hero. Again, another one who didn't contribute much beyond giving him his belongings, in this case his robes. Can you see the pattern here? Idrini Narothan lived in the late years of the Tribunate and helped demoralize and repel Akaviri invaders behind the scenes. She knew nothing of the prophecies before she took refuge with the Ashlanders. She died attempting to loot the ruins of Kogarun. She offered you lockpicking tools. She died in as much an anticlimactic way as her own contribution. Ranso thought himself Nerevar, for he was the most powerful warrior in the land. Power alone couldn't save his people. And it couldn't save him, though, but he did help the Vestige against Kanun Chodala as well. Lastly, there's Peakstar, who has a more interesting story. She was an Ashlander woman who washed ashore near Ald Redania as a baby. She was found and raised by the Urshilaku tribe and became a figure of legend among the Ashlanders. Many believe this mysterious girl child was you. Though she survived the Blight, she did not master the arts of war and pointlessly died while fighting an Ash Vampire. She became the last known failed incarnate, and her spirit went to the cavern of the incarnate. You were betrayed, used as an icon for political power, reincarnated several times as unimportant or generally useless people due to bad upbringing mostly and generally went against me. Degothur. You still wonder why? Well, that shall be a topic for another sermon. I know I said that before, I know. I just need mental preparation to not make the Red Mountain erupt again if I flip out from remembering the contents. Anyway, let us stop here for now, Nerevar. As always, remember to raise your thumbs, subscribe to my sermons, and share your thoughts in the parchment below. I thank my patrons for their support and my adoring fans, Connor Runda and Tonya Davis, for helping us go through another Red Year.